Well, Australians are defying cost of living pressures to take a holiday this year, and no doubt you deserve it. New research reveals 75% of people surveyed will be travelling over the summer, with most of them within their own state. Overseas, Bali has surprisingly dropped from the list of popular summer destinations. Joining me live is Tourism and Transport CEO Margie Osman. Uh, Margie, I know you don't want to push up inflation, but the, this data and survey certainly got to be music to your is and that of the tourism industry. Oh, look, it's no doubt that it's really good news to see so many people still committed to taking a break. And I think the interesting thing for us is that when you look at the list of things on the non-essential spending list, travel still seems to be at the top. So clearly for families and for other people, just taking a break is still a really good idea at this time of the year just to recharge the batteries. Yeah, absolutely it is. So where will most Australians be heading? Well, if they're going overseas, the number one destination is New Zealand, followed by Europe. Now, I do think that some of that is still visiting friends and family. You know, there's still a bit of catching up happening post-COVID and possibly the whole visiting friends and family thing is in overdrive because people have missed out for so long. Uh, then we've got Japan uh, and we've got Thailand and Singapore and Bali nowhere in the list for this summer holiday period. Mm. And I think people are, you know, just looking for some new places to go. OK, and um, what about within the state? That's an interesting uh, development, isn't it? Um, and I'm sure the, the premiers will be happy with that, keeping all the, <laughs> the money within their borders. Yeah, look, I think that's true. So something like 36, nearly 40% of people have said they're going to holiday in their own state. Um, and I think the really critical thing about this is it's not so much that their cost of living issues aren't impacting uh, people are still taking a holiday, but they may be changing where and what they do. So the holidays are shorter, they're spending a bit less, they're staying at home, and I think probably we're seeing a higher number than previous years of everybody staying with Grandma or Great Auntie Nelly. So I think there'll be lots of um, relatives and friends landing in the spare room over the next month or two. Yep, I, I think I'm in that category, Margie, to be honest. <laughs> what about you? Uh, where does a CEO such as yourself take a holiday over Christmas? Oh, gosh, I don't take holidays at this time oh, of the year. Really. Margie, come on. I know. It's just because I'm here to help out and talk a bit about where people are going. But if I was going anywhere, oh, look, I'm a bit of a stay at home. I have a friend who has a farm down near on the south coast near Kayama and that's my idea of a really good time so I go down to the farm. All right you're in the uh, staying in the state category I then am. like where that. Where are you going? Lovely Laura. Where I'm are with you. you. I'm with you. I'm uh, staying exactly where I am. <laughs> All of the above. It's good to appreciate your own backyard from time it's to time. It but is. Margie, but one other, yeah, uh, I was just uh, going to say one other thought if people are travelling overseas just be a bit patient in the airport space. It's always busy in holidays, but um, you'll get there. Yeah, very good advice indeed. Margie, we've seen a lot happen in the travel industry uh, this year, post-COVID. Um, there's been a lot of frustrated travellers, I might say. But what are you seeing now? Have those big problems largely being ironed out? And what's happened in terms of our our patterns of behaviour. Have people changed the way that they holiday post-COVID? Oh, look, I, I do think that there was a, an element of revenge travel directly after the borders <laughs> opened where everybody kind of said, I'm out of here, I don't care what it costs. Uh, but I do think, and we've seen this with some research work we've been doing about people uh, travel patterns within Australia, and I think this is one of the really interesting changes. We're seeing a higher proportion of Australians choosing to holiday at home than we did before COVID. Mm. And really interestingly, young people. So people under 30 are rediscovering or discovering for the first time parts of Australia they've never been to. So Western New South Wales, places like Dubbo and Broken Hill, areas in the um, southwest of uh, Western Australia. These places are all having a, a fabulous travel renaissance because they're places lots of people have never been before. So I think that's a great thing. That's a great outcome. But what we are seeing is people taking a shorter holiday and spending less, and that's going to keep on going. And I think we're also seeing a bit more carefulness when people travel. So things like, um, you know, giving themselves a bit more time at the airport, 
Mm. Understanding it may not actually be the airport or the airline's fault, but it could just be the weather. <laughs> you know, I mean, there are a few of those sorts of things. I think the last 12 to 18 months has made people into more sophisticated travellers, if the truth be known. Yeah, I'm not like that. I re really like to cut things fine. I don't like to waste a moment <laughs> there uh, and I don't account for any of that. I, I like to have luck on my side, <laughs> but maybe <laughs> that's just me. I don't know. Well, well Marky, is... uh, enjoy the farm. Thank you so much. And you too. Have a gorgeous Christmas and happy holidays. Yes, and happy holidays to everyone. Marky, thanks so much. A pleasure to talk to you. We'll My see you pleasure, soon. Laura. You too. Bye.